So as Isabel said, my name is Alan Glickenhaus. I am the API business strategist for IBM. Uh, so my role is to help you all be successful with APIs in your business. And so I travel the world. I meet with uh, individual companies, uh, conferences like this one. Um, and I also write a lot of articles and, and uh, blogs and things like that, which I'll be sharing with you at the end of the session. Uh, first thing I wanted to say is Medi is leading on the uh, reaction wall, and we can't let Medi win, right? So you have to get out there and try the IBM reaction wall and see if you can uh, top Medi's score. Um, so, so please go out there and, and, and do that. Um, so today I, I'm going to speak to you about a uh, maturity model. Uh, we call it the journey map uh, for the API economy. This is something that I was a part of creating. I certainly am not going to take credit for the whole thing. Um, I worked with several folks from IBM. It's, um, it is a maturity model. It's, it, we, it's a way that we recognize um, how things are changing in the API space, how companies tend to start, you know, and where we see this progressing over time, and then I get to predict the future, uh, which is always a fun thing to do as well. So uh, one of the questions that I ask uh, when I go in for a session with a, a, a customer, um, a business, to, to, to discuss APIs with them is, why are you doing APIs? What, what is the, the goal that you have? And oftentimes, I find that they have a challenge answering this question. Uh, it, it, they might tell me what they're doing with APIs. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But th they can't answer the why question. What is the value that they're hoping to get out of this API? And, and so um, after, you know, sometimes it works and sometimes they're able to, to share that information, but other times maybe not as successful. So we start to talk about possibilities for things that they might be trying to accomplish. Uh, making money, you know, we, a lot of people talk about monetization. That's a, a topic I sometimes present at these conferences conferences or partnering, uh, time to market, you know, there's a number of different um, answers that might be there for, for why you're doing uh, API related things. And then I started to think about this in the context of a maturity model and, and I said it will be a fair question for them to ask me is where is this going? You know, what does the API economy look like in the future? Uh, where do I stand today? Uh, where is the API economy going, and how do I move from where I am to this future state? And, and I thought about um, the famous quote by Wayne Gretzky, uh, a good hockey player plays where the puck is, a great hockey player plays where the puck is going to be. Um, and, and so knowing where the puck is going to be is a, a useful thing in deciding what your strategy might be and how you move forward. Now, a little side note. I used this same chart in, uh, in this presentation at API Day Singapore. Um, hockey is not a big sport in Singapore, uh, <laughs> so I'm hoping that this goes off for a little better here in, in Finland. I hear you won the, the world championship, so yay. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> so congratulations for that. So, th so we're going to talk about where the puck is and where it's going to be. Um, so I'm going to hit a couple of frequently asked questions before, uh, in, during this session. And the first one that I get asked almost all the time about maturity is, isn't this maturity? That you, know, you recognize that most businesses, as they start in an API initiative, they start with internal APIs. They have consumers in their company that are using the APIs first, and then they progress over time to uh, a uh, partnering scenario, maybe with partners they already have then onboarding new partners, and then eventually they do public APIs. So isn't, isn't that maturity? And in fact, I think when my management asked me to write this, um, this model, I think that's what they thought maturity was, and I was going to come back in about a day with, uh, with this answer. Um, do you think this is maturity? Anybody think that? Like, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of hinting that it's not, right? So, so, uh, so, uh, so let, let me give you a scenario, right? So if I'm doing internal APIs and I have defined what I'm hoping to gain by doing these APIs, but I've done a definition of several different projects that I might do, mobile projects, sharing data through the enterprise, doing things with social uh, interactions, that my developers are consuming my APIs and doing it. I have a process for defining good APIs. I measure the success of those APIs. Uh, I, I've communicated to my internal developers in an organized fashion how they consume those APIs and why this is a better way to do it before. That's scenario one. Scenario two is I have a situation where somebody outside my company is writing a comparison app for what I offer, my products. And so I need to get my product list 
out to that person so that I can be part of their comparison app. So I quickly put together a team. We write something. We get it out there, and we give this person an interface that they can use. Which of those is more mature? The first one, right? The first one has a repeatable process. They're going to move forward. They're going to do more things. The second one was an ad hoc kind of a scenario, but they published a public API, and the first team only did internal APIs, right? So what you're doing as far as internal, partner, public is not the answer to, um, to, to uh, maturity, right? So um, what we think about when we put together the model was the repeatability of, of what you're doing. The, the maturity is defined by the effect of the initiative on the business. It's not about getting something out the door, right? It's about the methodology. Do you have a repeatable methodology? Um, how are you doing this? It, the approach that you're using to do it is, it, is it something that you can do again? Is it repeatable? And then finally, the ad hoc uh, delivery of public APIs really is not, not a, a way to define maturity, right? So, so that was uh, the, probably the most common question that we get asked about maturity is, isn't this observational thing that we see people doing internal first and then partner and then public uh, maturity? And the answer is, no, it's not. So when we sat down to come up with um, the maturity model, uh, we were tasked to do this. It was myself and a, a whole bunch of other very smart people in IBM uh, got together. And, and, and we decided the first thing we needed to do is define levels of maturity. What would the levels be? And so being mostly technical folks, uh, we came up with, you know, at the previous session, if you were in here, was talking about ad hoc uh, approaches versus uh, uh, you know, more advanced. Very good session to have right before this one. So ad hoc approaches, like the approach I just spoke about for the public API scenario. And then what we see in the marketplace is that as initiatives form around doing APIs, the IT organization tends to take the lead in the early stages. And the IT organization, given this job, has often already built the IT systems that are going to be supplying the information for these APIs. And so they build the APIs based on the systems that are providing the information. And that turns out to not be quite as successful as if you move forward into a partnership between the business and IT and start to think about the consumer-driven view of what does somebody want from me instead of what do I have. And, and so this becomes the next phase of maturity that we started to think about. And then finally we thought about uh, innovation and then finally market-driven. And so we liked these titles. They were simple, um, you know, pretty easy to understand. We understood it. Um, and, and then the marketing people got hold of it. And, and so, uh, so they didn't like these titles. They felt that ad hoc was not politically correct. And so we shouldn't say ad hoc. So, uh, so instead we say learning using an unstructured approach. Okay, and, and, and so that is the name of the first one. And, and then the second one is discovering and experimenting to gain market understanding. Okay, is this me more meaningful to you or less? I just want to, you know, quick surveys. Next one, implementing targeted market solutions. Expanding to full digital market solutions and innovating with predictive transformation. So. I give you the first scenario, the first list of titles because I think they mean something, and then I give you what you're going to see in the model. <laughs> okay, so this is the model uh, titles for for um, for the different levels of maturity. So so. The next question that we had to ask ourselves is, okay, so that, those are the levels. Now, how do you d define what maturity means within each one of those levels? Okay, so we started to look at it from both a business and a technology perspective. I led the business side. We had another person from our consulting team lead the, um, the technology side. And so we broke this down into a set of domains, uh, dimensions. And so under business, we had a business approach and management Management was a term that, again, marketing liked. Uh, we liked governance, uh, but, but management uh, is there. And then architecture, information and content, process and methods, and infrastructure. Okay? So great, we have some dimensions to measure across, but that's not defined down to a detailed enough level. So underneath each of these, we identified factors. And so the full model has quite a bit of breakouts into different things. So you can see under each one of these, uh, business drivers, monetization, various things uh, in that category, organizational structure, communication, measurements for management, architecture, you know, and so on and so on. So these are the way we defined uh, the model, 
Okay, so now we have a structure to the model. We had to then define for every one of the different levels of maturity, what does a business look like at that level? Okay, so that's, that was the, the questions that we asked ourselves. Not what did you do, what did you accomplish? Did you deliver an API for a public uh, thing? But what does a business act like at that particular level of maturity? So I realize this is an eye chart, and, and your, the slides have already been given to the conference, and you can uh, download them. Um, but I just want to read across here, so I'll point. So here's the, the dimension. This is one dimension. This is the, the business approach dimension. And then here are our wonderful titles, learning using an unstructured approach, discovering and experimenting, blah, 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 all the way across the five different levels. So then we thought about some questions that we would ask ourselves to determine what does a business act like at these particular types of levels of maturity. And so just to think about, and again, this is only one dimension. Uh, here are the four factors that we had underneath that dimension. And so we saw project-based kinds of scenarios for the, the, the basic one. And then they would focus on time to market as the next uh, thing. Then they would drive to new customers um, and, and reaching out to get new, new market share new channels, and an expanding ecosystem. So that, that was kind of the titles that went across with some detailed definitions underneath each one. And again, we did this for each one of the factors. So, uh, so it's a pretty comprehensive model. You could imagine there was a page like this for all the other uh, dimensions uh, as well. I'm, I'm not going to take you through every one of those in detail because, first of all, you couldn't see it, uh, <laughs> especially those of you in the back. So just to kind of summarize where this ended up, uh, we had the business approach and then these titles for each one of these, uh, these different states that somebody might be in with the factors as, as detail. So this is the uh, business approach and, and management. Maybe this is a little more readable for those, those of you in the back. Uh, and then on the uh, technology perspective, the, the um, four different dimensions with each one of the summaries there as well. So we have a very smart API community here in this room. I'm, I, I really invite your feedback on this model. I'm, I'm not done yet, I'm, but uh, I want to kind of plant the idea in your head that when we get to the Q&A, that you, you think about, you know, the way we structured this model, does it make sense? Do you think we're far off? You know, we, you know how does this uh, fit with your experiences? Um, so I'd like to have a good discussion uh, with you about that, um, you know, either here in this session or, or afterward. Um, so let, let's move on. So some more frequently asked questions. Uh, so this is one that, again, my management uh, asked me after we were done. So this is a great model, Alan. We like it a lot. But where is our product? I don't see my product name in there anywhere. And, and where's the point where they say they install IBM API Connect and, and then life is good, right? So, so, um, so the answer is that the product is not in the model, OK? So, so um, it's not that you, uh, you uh, hit this product at this point in your maturity. But it's really more about um, how do you move between the stages. So the question I asked at the beginning is, where are you now? Where do you want to be? And how do I move forward? And the how do I move forward part is the hard part, right? So, so what we try to use this model for is if a customer is doing something with APIs and they want to understand where am I, and have a, uh, a goal to be at a certain higher level of maturity, what are the steps I need to take to move forward to that? And some of them might be to put in an API management solution, right? So that I can do this in a repeatable, governed, fashioned way with security and a developer portal and all that kind of thing. And, and so that becomes a part of how you transition to the model, between the model. And we update our product, as our competitors do, frequently, right? And so we wanted this model to be something that could last more than a, you know, a few weeks. And so um, the ability to continue to take a view of this is how maturity looks, but then have the different functionality that comes out over time still be a way that you move between the stages in the model was important to us. So uh, one of my colleagues here this week is going to speak about GraphQL. Um, you know, GraphQL was non-existent when we wrote this model, right? So, so you know, if we had to redo this model every time a different technology comes out, we, we wouldn't have anything that was really worthwhile. Uh, hackathons, right? So we also get the question about hackathons. So where, what, what about hackathons? Can I do something? Uh, where do hackathons fit in this model? And really the same answer applies there, right? So hackathons are, again, a way of getting information about the, API, uh, the APIs that you have, giving you hopefully an external 
perspective on those APIs so that you can determine whether or not these meeting, are meeting the goals of an external community that you're targeting for your APIs, right? So, so hackathons fit in in that way as well. And then uh, the most common question I get was the first one, which is, you know, the internal partner and, and public question. The second most uh, important question, I, the most common question I get from everybody is, where is everybody? <laughs> so, so everybody wants to know where everybody else is, right? So where is everybody in their maturity? And, and to know whether or not they're behind everybody else or, or, or not. And, and so this is, I think, probably a... a an unimportant question because it's really more important where you are and where you want to be than where everybody else is, right? But, but the answer is uh, that people are all across the spectrum uh, and different companies are at different stages. And in fact, any single company is not going to be at a single level of maturity, right? So if you think about the different dimensions and the factors that we have, you may be more advanced in some of those and less advanced in others. And so the idea of taking account of where you are and understanding that for the same company, you may be an early stage in one thing and a later stage in another one um, is, is, you know, a fact, and how do I move the things that I'm further behind on forward so that I can become more advanced across the board? So um, the last chart I have on, on the uh, maturity model is this one. This is often the only chart I show on the maturity model. Um, it's just a summary chart um, that, that talks to you know, the, the whole picture of the, the different levels, the different perspectives, dimensions, and, and factors. So. I want to go back to one of my early thoughts that I mentioned, which is the definitions of the different levels of maturity with the original names, um, and, and talk to uh, the idea that what we're seeing in the market is primarily an IT-led early stage that then becomes a business and IT partnership scenario, that then becomes a business-led scenario, and then becomes an ecosystem scenario, and then becomes a more dynamic environment where people are creating business relationships more dynamically. And if you think about that, and what I'm seeing in the market right now from uh, this year in particular, I'm seeing a tremendous amount more focus on getting the business involved. And so in the early stages of my experience in talking to people at the conferences and individual customers, IT tended to want to keep it to themselves. They didn't see why business needed to be involved. Business said, I hear the word API and I'm running, right? So, you know, I don't need any part of that. And, and so there was a, a, you know, separation there that was acceptable on both sides. And now what I'm seeing is with the term digital transformation and digital business, business is starting to think about getting more involved. And the IT organization is recognizing that APIs are not about IT only, that they're about providing value to the business and getting the business involved in defining the uh, relationship uh, of the APIs to an outside consumer, in particular outside consumer, um, it, it would be a valuable thing to have. So uh, as I mentioned, I write a lot of blogs and papers. Um, you uh, can access all the ones that I write and everybody else writes from IBM through our uh, developer uh, API Connect site. The, the blog link at the top there will get you to everything. Uh, what I'm going to share with you now in the few minutes that I've got left here is um, everything I've written for the last several years on, on, on these topics. So I encourage you um, not only to talk to me about the maturity model while we're here this, uh, these couple of days, but also any of the other topics that I'm about to show you. Um, these are all live links that you get when you download the, the presentation. You'll have all of this. So there are three pages of content, and I'm going to walk you through this now in kind of a high level. The first one on the top uh, right here will get you to everything. So that is everything I've written. Unfortunately, the sequence of it is from the most current one that I've written backward in time, so it has no logical um, you know, structure to it. So I put these charts together to help you with that. So many times, as you're deciding to bring the business on board, you need to explain to them API management, APIs, you know, what is the API economy, why should you care, some basic things. Even on the technical side, if you have new people that are coming onto the team and they need that kind of information, um, you know, these are the questions that often get asked and some good, good content there. The right column is digital business, digital transformation. I've been writing most of these fairly recently. Probably you won't find one more than a year old in that list. Uh, one of the ones that's getting a lot of attention is this digital ecosystem. Again, it's my view of um, where things were in the past, 
where they are today and where they're going in the future. I love to get, uh, get to be predicting things in the future. It's kind of like nobody can tell me I'm wrong, right? So, uh, so, uh, so that's page one. Page two, uh, business and value. ROI, you know, uh, monetization. I've already had a couple of conversations here with folks about monetization. There's a white paper, and I did a presentation on monetization at the Zurich API Days conference. Uh, so if you want to talk about monetization, we can talk about that while we're here. This column is probably where I spend most of my time. So I've now been getting a lot of questions about how do I create a strategy? What's good governance? What are uh, business drivers, use cases, uh, everything to how do I communicate this to the outside world? Um, and then finally dealing with legal and, and things like that. The most recent blog I wrote just last week is this one, which is exactly like what this presentation is about, how to get the business to participate in the API initiative. And the journey map that I just covered is also over here. So, so that's, uh, that's uh, page two and page three. Uh, is um, t architecture, technology, and a bit about our product, and then industry use cases. And I've tried to think of every industry I could possibly think of and come up with um, using the methodology that I have for creating APIs, sample use cases that you might do in that industry. And so hopefully you can find some use out of this content, and I'm going to be here for all day tomorrow as well. And I would like to have a conversation with you, whether it's about the the maturity model or it's about you know any of these use cases or any of the other things about creating a strategy, governance, roles and responsibilities, whatever it may be. I'm done. Any questions?